Oh man. Yeah, man. Yo, what up, what up? It's uh, Ram with the Y'all Podcast. That's right. You're a Wednesday. Check this out. Created a platform to give people an opportunity to come on here to talk about their journey to the winds, to inspire, to inspire, and be a motivational engine for viewers like you. I got a special guest today. Got my man Greg Camarillo here. Uh, known this guy for a few decades. Uh, well, we said a couple of decades. Trying to make us too old. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, hold on. We 50. You know, uh, man. And um, it's an honor to be able to interview you, man. Uh, it's an honor to be able to talk about, you know, just the different things that have transpired in our lives and just what we've grown from, man. And I, you know, I'm honored to you know be a friend to you, uh, you know, know how amazing you are just from firsthand experience, but also at the same time, just see how you've been an inspiration to me and then others, you know, out here in the public view But right now. Um, yeah. I, I think right now I want to be able to, to talk more about you just having an opportunity to just have a platform to, to just make the, it's about you talking about your journey to the wins, man. This is, this is one of the things that I, I really am and invite folks to do when they get on the podcast is they get to be their authentic self. Uh, they get to be how genuine they are. And, uh, you know, it, it's not script. This isn't one of those things where you're put on blast to make you feel like, you know, um, that you have to, you know, respond to uh, questions that may be out of the ordinary. I think one of the things that I emphasize with our, our folks is that you get to bring thyself, own thyself, and, and just be an inspiration to other people like that and even eat. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> and even hey, eat. I got my coffee, brother. Look, this is life. We might we might get into it, man. But you know, dad life requires you to multitask, and so uh, I'm here on the podcast. Luckily, my house is silent enough for now, but I got to eat and chat while we're doing it, bro. And that's that's the focus, man. This is why this podcast is here, so you can be yourself, man. So when I go into it, man, it's more so about just telling me about your journey to the wind, telling the viewers about your journey to the wind. I mean. I got a couple of questions that you kind of already know I'm kind of leading in with, but ultimately yeah. I, who is Greg Camarillo? You know, who, who, who is this amazing guy that I know, but that the viewers don't know? Yeah. Oh man. That's a lot to unpack. And it, it's a, uh, I mean, we can, we can dive right into it. Um, but first I want to go back and kind of the reason I'm here with you is because of the power of sports, the power of brotherhood and what, why I am with such a believer in athletics for kids because of the experiences you get from it. And, and I don't just mean like playing a game on a field. We are on this podcast today because you, <clears throat> because you and I shared a football field together. We were teammates. We became brothers, roommates for a while. And it just, those relationships, man, it, that's what, that's a big win. We're talking about the year of the wins. That's a lifelong win of those relationships that you develop and uh, why I'm excited to chat with you today. I mean, I think one thing that I really appreciate about that is, you know, I was talking to a friend the other day and I was just like, yo, in that football community, I mean, you build so many friendships, so many relationships and so many commonalities. Right. Um, and it doesn't matter what walk of life you're from. You all share one meaning goal and in whatever that sport was, you lock into it and you become a team. You come fa almost family for life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, man, I, I agree. I'm a I am a big you know, supporter of sports with kids because of the camaraderie it builds, the discipline it builds, you know, the confidence that it builds and, and then the team and the love and the family aspect. Because we got kids coming from a lot of different backgrounds that don't have families, that don't have the support, but their only means of family is right there on Monday through Sunday, it, you know, at some point, right? So, yeah. you know, I, I agree with you, man. I guess my, my, other, my other question is, man, is once, I know we talked about more about how we met, but I know that you, Greg, you, when I, when I, when I grew up with you, you're one of the people that I actually looked up to. Um, and it was regardless of if I was a year ahead of you or not, you, you had your own swag about you. You had your own discipline about you. And regardless of if you had good parents or not, you still had a choice on, you know, you know, going the right way, doing the right thing. I mean, we were both presidents of our high school. You know what I mean? Yeah, Different years. And <laughs> funny, wait, because your brother was president a couple of years before me. Yeah. Uh, the trio. Anyway, um, you still had uh, a, a choice to, to go a route. So as I lead into questions around who is Greg Camarillo, I only can think about the way that you were 
you know, in high school and, and now where you are now. And it just shows you stayed on the right path from when I knew you to where you are now. Can you talk yeah. About- uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll dive into my identity now, but I'm a firm believer that your identity is developed by the environment you're in and the people around you. And that can be a good or a bad thing. Um, but who you are is a reflection of the people that have been an influence in your life. And uh, I mean, the biggest influence in my influences in my life to the point where I met you in high school were my family, you know, my parents um, and, you know, my brother and my sister. And, uh, you know, you look at the, the history of the Camarillo family and then how that developed my values. So uh, my parents both come from immigrant families. My grandfather Uh, came from Mexico at at a young age to America to work and find opportunity. My other grandfather came from Hungary at 16, hopped on a boat, crossed the Atlantic Ocean in search of work and opportunity. Um, And in that also education. So in one generation, my family went from immigrants to, uh, you know, a, a living the American dream, you know, from, from showing up, to these, to this, to these shores with nothing, um, and then creating a family, creating opportunity, uh, and so that has always been instilled in me. Take care of your education because that's going to create opportunity. Um, so my parents always made sure I did my work. I was studying, and that stuff came first. Um, but along with that came with uplifting others, and, and um, the journey isn't just about yourself. How can I create opportunity for myself? But how can I share that opportunity? And so that that is the value system that I was given as a kid, um, and it has kind of guided who I am and who I became, um, and who I surround myself with. And that's that still to this day is a big a big force in everything I do. You know, man, and I can see that. You know, I mean, I know the family you come from. I didn't know the lineage to the degree that you just spoke about with your grandfathers, um, but it, it just it, it makes sense. You know, what I mean, just from knowing you know, Hayes, you know, uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then how he gets down. And when I, when I refer to Hayes, I, I, refer to, I refer to Albert Camarillo. And I, and I love the father that you have because he's a grinder. I mean, I remember when we were roommates and you invited me into, you know, your living quarters and you allowed me to know what it looked like to, you know, be around a family, man. I saw your dad up handling business, getting over to the college, still being a family man, still being a husband and all those in one husband, father, but father to three and have to multi-manage and husband to, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And to be able to see you now, man, and seeing you do it. And it's, it's, it's crazy. Cause you have a wife with three kids, just like your dad, wife with three kids, yeah. uh, three girls, but you know, yeah, yeah, the dynamic is different, but, but I see all that, man. And, and I think for me being able to see it firsthand was, was, it was very inspiring to now, not being around you as much, but being able to see it and have conversations with you from time to time and seeing that you're, you're, you're following in the blueprint that was set before you, right? Um, yeah. Man, in that, man, I, I heard that there's a lot of multitasking, you know, that, <laughs> that goes along with that. So yeah. can, you, can you go a little bit more about that? Yeah, man. Uh, so I had, I had great role models as, as parents and as a dad uh, early on in my life and great influence. And um, one story, one moment that kind of comes to mind is uh, my dad was a professor at Stanford for 41 years at his retirement celebration. It was a room full of people talking about the impact he had on them. His career uh, and how, you know, he's a full time professor, but also had time to, you know, be an activist for uh, civil rights. And I'm going through my head thinking like he's doing all of these things. And never once did I feel like that took away from being dad. Like never once did I feel like I could, he couldn't do something with me because he was helping other people. And that was inspiring to me to know that as a kid, you can have a dad that does everything he can for work and everything he can for you and everything he can for his wife tells me that, you know, you can do that. You can be dad. You can be present for your kids while still being present in your career. Um, and so that's, that, that is an inspiration to me. How can I give my kids my all? How can I give my wife my all? How can I give my career my all? Um, it's doable. I'm not 100% sure how we did it, but it's doable. And I'm trying to figure out that same thing. I mean, it, it's, it's crazy because I think about like how much balance that takes, man. Um, how much self-care it takes. Um, and, and never <laughs> never seeing your dad 
from what I when I grew up knowing him around you, I never saw your dad sweat. I never saw him like get extra mad unless he was getting mad at you about something. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't too often, but it happened. Right, it, it wasn't too often, but you know, again, that goes back to that straight and narrow that you stayed on. But I I can't imagine, you know, because I only mentioned about fatherhood, husbandry. I didn't include the historian part. I didn't include, you know, all the different things in, in the students that he also had to support, you know what I mean, in the civil rights support. And that that has to take a great deal of, of balance, some uh, some solid mental stability, you know what I mean? Uh, was it going in the backyard, chilling, reading, just taking in the air, you know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. those things, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to me, it's it's you could find time for the stuff you're passionate about. If you are passionate about, about being a dad, if you are passionate about your work, if you're passionate about your family, you find a way to make it happen. And mm-hmm. I'm not, you know, I don't have, the, I don't have the answer. You know, I, I know what it looks like. I know what it looks like as a kid looking up to it. Um, but I think it's a journey we all try to figure out and it's different for each one of us. And it's a matter of, of, you know, just grinding one, priorities too uh and sometimes it just it, you know and sometimes it over you, you get stressed out and overloads and some things need to give and take but overall we're talking over a lifetime of work right. i'm hoping that i can i can give everybody the 100 percent that they deserve i mean and just it's so funny because when we started out the podcast interview it was i would say who is greg camarillo and the great thing about it again this is the authentic genuine part of being able to have this type of conversation is that folks are actually getting more about Greg Camarillo. You know what I mean? Like, it's not about, oh, from day one, Greg was born here to, you know, it's it's more about, hey, I'm getting a better idea who this guy is and, you know, the different qualities that he presents and that he embodies and whatnot. So I think one thing that came to mind, man, was uh, being on the same football team with you at Miller Atherton High School (laughs) and seeing you as a tight end with great hands. I mean, (laughs) spider-man hands bro like you was out there catching that greg was gonna go get that ball on top of being a kicker like oh, yeah. i mean bro you were a multitasking and then on top of that i think you played a little bit of d2 didn't you oh i, I was a dn my senior year Man, the team out, there, out there blasting people right trying to get that qb um <laughs> and so i think when folks don't really know the teammate that you were before you got to college and then before you got to pro like in my mind i'm like man greg played kicker he played tight end. He played DN. Then he got to Stanford and got this process going. And now my man's in the league. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But I think what what runs through my mind was your football IQ, bro. You you knew the field, bro. You knew stuff that we didn't know. We were just out just having athletic ability. There are things that you knew and saw in the game that we didn't see in high school. What where did that come from, bro? Yeah, man. Well, uh, my football career and kind of a a life um, theme has been capitalizing on opportunity, you know, trying your best to create opportunity and then capitalizing when you get opportunity. Uh, A lot of my football career is because of the people that were around me, you know, like, you know, I wasn't the fastest guy, uh, often the slowest guy. (laughs) I was never the biggest guy. Um, I didn't even really lift weights in high school. Like it just wasn't, that was just wasn't part of our program. That's not what we did. Um, But every time I was given some sort of opportunity, I took full advantage of it. Uh, I learned from teammates. I learned from watching older guys. I learned from the coaches we had. Uh, Anyone that was willing to give me knowledge or somewhere I could just sit and watch, I absorbed it. And then if they gave me an opportunity to perform, then I know I had to be ready for that opportunity. And you can create those opportunities through grinding. I'm not going to say I created my entire career just because I worked hard. I had a lot of help along the way, people creating opportunities for me. But you grind to create opportunities, and then you take advantage of, the, of those opportunities. I mean, the, I, I love – it's just the humility that I hear with you, man. And I love how you don't put it back on yourself, but you always pay it forward. You've been talking about, you know, folks that helped you along the way. Talk about your family. Talk about your family lineage, man, and teammates. And and that is what it's all about, you know, hence the reason why I can see how you made it to the league because I think you realize, and you correct me if I'm wrong, there's no I in team, you know what I mean? Everyone learns from each other. Each one teach one to be able to move forward in a way that's going to help everybody win, right? Yeah. 
right? So when, right? So, I mean, I think one of the things that I wanted to kind of touch on too, man, is since we're talking about this team aspect, man, you had, you sent out a tweet, right? And it was talking about that life after football and, and identity being lost from that. Um, you know, I, I want to kind of get more of an inside understanding around what it is that you uh, are feeling about that, even now still currently being at home, being with the family, being with the kids and, and learning how to function still, even after the football process, you know what I mean? Yeah. Talk a little bit more about that. Yeah. Well, um, I totally bypassed your first question of who is Greg Gamriel. Cause that, that's a tough one. And, <laughs> but yeah, I, fortunately, I so saw I'm an academic counselor at university of San Diego. I work with student athletes and I do an identity exercise with them every year. And so I have, I give them an example of, you know, this is how you tell people who you are. Um, and so I have, I have a longer answer, but part of that is I, to this day, a big chunk of my identity is athlete. And I don't mean former athlete. I'm a former football player, but I am an athlete. Uh, if you I mean, just look at my background, this is what I choose to show people, you know, football stuff, football stuff, football stuff. A big portion of who I am is an athlete. A big chunk of my life was being a football player. Played one year at Pop Warner, four in high school, five in college, eight in the pro. So we're looking at, let's do some quick math, 13, 17, 18 years. I hope I didn't mess that up. <laughs> 18 years where the, the biggest chunk of my identity was football player. And then at the end of one meeting with one general manager in New Orleans, that was done. Absolutely gone. So think about, you know, any listeners, think about what is a big chunk of your identity and then take it away suddenly and what that can do to you as a person. Uh, you know, you're losing your you, a purpose. You're losing a passion. You're losing goals. You're losing a daily schedule. You're losing a routine. That's hard to cope with. Uh, and then also, you know, the the emotional highs of being in the NFL, of playing in a stadium full of people, uh, being in front of millions of people on TV. Shit, Barack Obama said my name on TV, which to me is like the greatest, coolest thing ever. Uh, but then I'm laying in bed at 30, retired, thinking, how am I ever going to replicate those feelings? Mm -hmm. And so losing the identity, losing excitement, uh, it's a difficult, it makes the transition difficult. You know, you try to re- uh, you try to figure out who you are. You try to figure out where you are going. Um, and fortunately, I had a, a great support team around me. I had a very supportive wife. I had my first daughter at the same time I retired. So I got to put a lot of energy into that while I was trying to redefine who I am and, and what my future was going to look like. I mean, man, you're speaking about something that uh, a lot of folks talk about um, amongst the groups of people like, but putting it out there you know, so that people can see it publicly, <clears throat> hear from someone that actually was in the league and is trying to make this transition. Even now, like I can imagine there still are some times where you're just like, what? You know, and you just do it, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I can only attest to, uh, it's maybe not, it's not the equivalent of NFL, but playing in the AFL for as long as I did, I think for me, um, I had no idea what was gonna happen after that, man. I was just like, yeah, these are my skill set. Uh, like working with kids, uh, like mental health, I'm going to do that. And yeah. still having that itch to want to still play. Cause I'm like, man, I still can play. I still got this athletic ability. What the heck? Um, ready to leave it, ready to yeah. not, not play, you know, with the whole, you know, go out into a career and, and socialize with other people to this degree. Cause they don't know like who I am outside of football. Like, no, nah, that's not what I do. And want to just still kind of strap them up and, and get out there and just show, Hey, I still got this. Like, you know, yeah. You don't believe in me? What? Let me, I'm going to show you that I still got this. You know what I mean? Like, hold on. Like, you don't know my speed. You don't know my hands. I got football IQ. But help me, you know, like, help. Look at me. You see what I'm saying? And, and I think that's, that's something that I'm saying that I can, uh, I can attest to, man. I still, to this day, like, be struggling. I see little kids be like, I'm coaching them. And they're like, man, Coach Lewis, you don't know what you're doing. You ain't fast. And I'm over here like, I may be like a D tackle right now. But well, pull out that old VHS tape and show the show. Hey, hey, let me dust it off real quick. You know what I'm saying? Let me find a VCR, you know. Uh, but but man, just being able to to talk more about that mental health and just here you said support team, man, and how imperative that is, man. Like you said, you yeah. have your daughter, you have your wife. I'm pretty imagine that you had your parents and your brother, have friends around you, man, that can relate to you. I can agree, man. Like, if I had not gone into the mental health field, 
Yeah. I think I probably would have had an issue with my identity for sure. Like still trying to figure out myself now 40. I don't want that. I don't, I don't want to be figuring out myself at 40, not saying I've arrived, you know, at yeah. life, but just in the aspect of football life. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I mean, if if it's a rough road if you haven't found a direction, you know, a, a decade after after football. And I'm not saying like you mentioned, you don't don't have to have all the answers. Right. But you got to find something to put your energy to, into your passion, uh, your passion into. Uh, and so somebody asked me the other day, I was doing an interview and they asked, you know, how do you feel? How do you feel that void that is football? What can you stick into that void? Mm. Uh, and, and I think the answer is nothing. Nothing one individual thing can plop right into that hole and patch it all up. I think you have to do some self-exploration and figure out what pieces of sport what pieces of whatever it was that that you miss the most mm. um and so you know you look at uh what i like from football and then where i try to get it i liked being a part uh, part of athletics i work in college athletics right now i like being on college campuses so i'm working in college athletics i get being around sports i get being on a college campus from my career um i like competition uh, i enjoy the you know, just getting out there in physical competition. I, I, I play in an old, well, before COVID, I played in an old man soccer league in the neighborhood just so I could get out there and run around and get that feeling of competition. Um, I really enjoyed, and this is something that I didn't ever think that would be the case. The doing something, doing it, not necessarily hundred percent because you never play a perfect game in football, getting immediate feedback analysis mm-hmm. and then trying to improve. I've learned in the real life, life, people don't give you honest feedback. Like I do my job every day and maybe every couple months, my boss might give me some sort of something to improve on. But every day in football, it is, you know, you got to straighten your toes out. You're too, you're standing up too tall in this route and you get something to work on. So I know the next day I come back, I'm working on this. I'm working on this. And you get a game every week to go to try to prove yourself again. You don't get that in life. Um, the little bit I get from is is broadcasting. I do a, a post game football show, Football Night in San Diego on NBC, and I get a little bit of that excitement of being on air. But then it doesn't go 100 percent smoothly. I get something I need to improve, fix, and come back next week and improve it. Um, I miss that. I miss that constant drive for improvement. Uh, I get a little of it, but you know that, that doesn't fill the void fully. I mean. Bro, when I think about just the different things that you've expressed just now at this point, I think the thing that stands out to me is when you said filling a void, um, I feel like football is just a part of who we are for the rest of our lives. It doesn't yeah. matter if we're playing it, if we're watching it, if we're coaching it, you know, someone's talking about it to us. It's just something that it, it's like a trigger. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> football, uh-huh. like wait, what? You know what I mean? Like, and, and, and all types of emotions, they run through my mind at the time. Um, and I, I love the fact that you are in education when it comes to academic counseling or supporting even athletes, you know, to be able to help them understand like their process with sports or and or afterwards, et cetera. Identity, man, like that's a big key. I mean, I have friends that work in the, the, the collegiate like lifestyle right now uh, in that career, and they're working with counseling, working with students, uh, student athletes, and they're giving them, them the importance of, hey, what if you don't make it to the league? You know, hey, what if what, what's going to happen with you? Are you going to get this college degree? You know, what is your identity behind? And when I hear you speak about the void and the things that you're doing, whether it be at NBC, the, you know, um, and, and then also being in, in, in at the college or whatnot, I think I'm more so looking at the fact that it's not to me. It, it doesn't seem like you're trying to fill a void. It just seems like that this is who you are. This is a part of your life, but you haven't made it your life. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. football was like your life before there was your wife and your daughter. You see what I'm saying? Like, it was just a part of where you were, but I don't, I don't hear a void being filled. I hear, you know, you just being able to continue this process. Does that make sense? Like, yes. Yeah. So I got, I was talking with someone because, because of my tweet about football players struggling, I had lots of great conversations in the, in the quote that came from it. And I might mess this up. So roll with me. You, uh, you, you did what you did because of who you are. What you did didn't make who you are. Something, I, I might mess that up a little, little bit. But the thought is that you played football at a high level because of the human being you are. 
you are not the human being you are now because you played football. Mm -hmm. And so that I, I, I reflected on that for a little while. And I, and I love that because it's, you are not, I am not Greg Camarillo because I played football. Mm -hmm. A part of me is just the drive, the desire to work hard, the desire to learn, the love for competition made me a football player. So how can I use those skills in, in real life? Because I still have those skills. I may not be a football player, mm -hmm. um, but I still have those skills and, and I just need to figure out a different way to apply them. Uh, and I think I'm figuring it out. And, you know, it's been, it's been eight years. I've officially this year, been out of the NFL as long as I've been in the NFL and to this day it's still a transition and I don't know at what point it ever won't be but like you mentioned I we're football players like that's not going away and I I'm cool with that I relate better to football players I understand football players better and if I spent 18 years of my life doing it it's okay for me to still relate to that if it's like like I know it's not the same as getting a PhD, but imagine how much time somebody with a PhD spends in their field. They will always identify for whatever that field is. And that's the same with me in football. Uh, and I'm cool with that. Man, and a lot of people aren't, you know what I mean? And for you yeah. to find that, bro, um, it speaks volumes, man. It's like, I, I remember um, when I called you and asked you to be on the podcast, you was busy. You was doing yeah. some duties around the house, around the backyard. You were you know, still trying to multitask and be a dad. Imagine still being, you know, a uh, husband at that time and making sure your husband tree duties were on point, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, and I, and I think about, man, the importance of multitasking as a father and a husband, and then also still having time for Greg Camarillo, you know what I mean? And uh, I, my hat's off to you, man, because I'm just a father to my son and I don't have the wife with all the kids. I, I don't have you know, the, the, the process of having to multitask with three, four different human beings, you know, outside of myself. Right. Yeah. Um, and again, man, it's, it's just, it just shows your, your ability to really emphasize the importance of, you know, uh, self-discipline, you know, cause it's still, it's, it's, this is a game of life now. You, it's, it's with your family, with, you know, with yourself and whatnot, and still be a family member to your parents and to your brother and whatnot. Um, yeah. I guess my question now too, as I stray away from that man, is just about the tweet, man, that you you tweeted. Like when you tweeted that man, like was it just something that was just? Have you been holding that in for a minute? Like, did you know? I, I can't imagine that you would know it was going to go viral, right? I had no idea. Right. Yeah. Uh, no, it's not really something I hold in. So it's it is. Uh, so just the whole tweet was about the struggle of transition for football players in particular, but something with, I work with athletes with athletes in general, it's something I share with my student athletes every year to try to get them to open up. If I show you what's going on in my mind and my life and my struggles, there's a better chance you'll open up to me. Uh, but really it was, it was prompted by the, uh, the death of Vincent Jackson, the uh, pro bowl wide receiver, who was a, a friend, a teammate, a camp roommate, um, so I was just doing my Drake, all, all in my feelings and decided to uh, just to share my thoughts. So I sent out a series of tweets about why athletes struggle. And I found fascinating the positive responses. I didn't think I was sharing any sort of secret, but everyone was talking about, man, Greg, I'm so glad you talked about that because most people don't talk about that. Uh, and so it, it started conversations. It, it started this conversation. Um, and like, you know, Randy, with, with, I've called you Randy for the first time in your life, buddy. Hey, hey for the first time <laughs> ever, I'm over here like, who? who? <laughs> Wait a minute. Buddy. <laughs> um, damn, lost my train of thought. But, but anyway, Randall. <laughs> um, it, it, I, I'm glad to see that, that we could start some conversations because people from all sports, all walks of life go through a transition. It's about support. It's about talking about it to make things easier. I'm not saying we're going to smooth out everyone's transition. Struggle is part of life, but talking about struggling, breaking down that stigma of men don't have to go get help um, can just make things, make things a little better. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I, I again, it, it, viewers, if you guys haven't gotten a better idea of who Greg Camarillo is, first thing that runs through my mind is humility educating folks and, and showing love. I mean, I, and I think that that's something that I have always experienced for myself, um, knowing this man. Uh, 
the other part too, man, is that what I want to just kind of touch on and probably end on too is, you know, after you've had this tweet, um, it's gone viral. Um, I know that it doesn't change who Greg Camarillo is. It, I, I think what, what runs through my mind is the question is, of, do you realize the influence that you have? You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you, you posted this tweet. It's been so influential. Folks are like, man, you're touching on something so deep. Do you see yourself as an influential person, bro? Like, I mean, you've you've hit you've hit social media on a high level, bro, and and just public media as well, man. Like, and I and I have to ask, man, do you what what's next with that? You know, as you it's yeah. question, do you see yourself as an influential person, and then what's next with that, bro? Like, what are you gonna do with that? Yeah, uh, I've got something in the works that is still in the works. So we'll we'll come back with another episode later to try to work on that, <laughs> um, but. As a professional athlete or a former professional athlete, there's more eyes on your actions and behaviors and words. Hmm. Uh, athletes have a platform, whether they like it a lot. I don't believe athletes are necessarily role models unless they want to be a role model. Hmm. Uh, but you are more visible. And in my mind, in my, in my personal life, I'm not saying this for everyone, you, you can use that visibility for good. And the ultimate example is Colin Kaepernick. He had a cause. He took a stance. It cost him his career. But look at the catalyst that he's been. Clearly, I'm not doing anything anything that impactful. But the fact that there are more eyes on my tweets, that there are more eyes on my on my statements, I feel like I can I have a bigger influence if I speak up. Uh, and so, anytime you know, it's it's easy to tweet. You lose you lose followers if you tweet something considered <laughs> controversial or political, but in my mind, I feel I have a responsibility with more eyes on my words and actions to use that in a positive light. Um, and to me, it's not about accumulating as many followers as you can, but what can I do to impact the people that are actually listening to me? Yeah, man, I, I, for me, it, you know, and I'm not trying to add extra to the authenticity of this conversation. Uh, because it's not about when I say interview, it's like, OK, cool, whatever, like conversation, man, like yeah. having brother to brother conversation. And for me, I think it's the longest conversation that we've had in some years. You know, yeah, what I mean? man. And, yeah. and you got to understand, for me, it's, it's a little emotional because it takes me back to when we were kids. And it takes me back to the conversations and the funnies and the roasting and the all different, <laughs> <laughs> man, the late night. It wasn't this real when we were teenagers, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, bro. Like, and, and to be able to have this dialogue with you on the platforms that we have now, um, it really does definitely touch my heart. Um, but it also, it also brings together this new um, relationship in adulthood, you know, yeah, what I mean? um, absolutely. because you're now teaching like, bro, you, you, you help me. When I read that tweet, bro, I was like, that is so true. That is so real. And I had to relate back without, the breakdown of how you you expressed it, right? I was like, man, I did those things, didn't not knowing I was doing those things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and so I know I'm speaking a lot, you know, and, and trying to tie it all back in, but it all to me matters uh, up until the point to where we're here now, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So man, with that being said, man, I I, I really appreciate you, Greg. You really yeah, man. You. Well, I, I appreciate you having me on a lot. Like, we'll bring it full circle. Like I mentioned in the beginning, I am who I am because of the, the people around me. Uh, and that is, you know, clearly my parents have a big influence, but the friendships, the mm -hmm. teammates, you know, the impact of just being with and around you, understanding who you are, where you come from, where you are now, like that impacts me. I grow as a human being because of my relationship with Randall. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, hey, Randall. <laughs> <laughs> with buddy love. There you go. Let me just, hey. let me Hey, love. but what they don't know is, let's just keep it real. We're going to go a little bit deeper. Hey, this man, Greg Camarillo, helped me start my first email address. <laughs> Neither, I didn't know what the heck an email address was. He was like, we're going to go. We're literally sitting at the computer. And he's like, baday love at hotmail.com. And I'm like, baday. And now from here on out, you're that. Baday, baday. Man. Beautiful, man. So, I, yeah, I mean, I, I am who I am because of the relationships I had. And one of those relationships is with you. Uh, in a, you know, the pandemic sucks. But the, the great thing about it is, or well, I shouldn't say great, a benefit from it is reconnecting with people via Zoom. 
like we would not have done this pre-pandemic. It might have been a quick phone call or a text, but to see your face, to chat with you, it's not the same as in person, but over, you know, to take this time to reconnect, um, to share our stories, it, that is a small silver lining of a, of a shitty year. Shitty year. Exactly, man. Uh, well, folks, I, I really want to just hope that you all really have taken advantage of this time and understand this process to the winds isn't just an overnight thing. They're, they're, they, you have to go through different things to get to the winds. But if you keep that winning mindset, you definitely for sure will have the win. Uh, Greg, thank you so much for this time, man. Looking forward to our next episode at some point, man. Hey, go do. <laughs>